I just bought this Ford Aden, and this is my first time seeing it. So we won this tractor, won it for 400 bucks. After fees, it's 500 bucks out the door, plus gas to go and get it. But the only information I had when I bought it was two pictures and a description that said motor stuck. Well, looks like a Ford. Looks like it's got something resembling oil. Sounds good. Uh, we now go to 177MF. Mm -hmm. That's where he protected it. Transmission fluid looks great. Usually those are all milky. The sheet metal is decent. Someone did uh, put that on it. It's a dent there. Someone painted it red. Look at the wheel up underneath there. Oh yeah, the rim is, uh, that's fine. You're supposed to be able to put your fingers through the rim. It's converted to 12 volts at some point. Of course, it's a flathead. It's got the distributor all up in the front there. The GoPro battery died right as we were rolling it off the trailer, but it's off. Pretty uneventful. Rolled down perfect. This clutch is going to be a problem, though. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do with this Ford is put some decent tires and rims on. You can see this one is completely rusted out there. It's not worth saving that rim. We're gonna paint this. This tire is actually, well, it's okay from the outside, I guess. But yeah, that's not good. So there's the old tire, and here's the rim we got at a junkyard. Decent. A little bit messed up here, but it'll work. Alright, the first thing I want to do with this tractor, I already know that the motor's locked up. But I want to put uh, acetone and ATF down the spark plug holes. But before we can do that, I want to wash it off get all the dirt and stuff that settles in these dishes around the holes out so that nothing goes down into the cylinders all right so here's my secret to freeing up these stuck engines so we've bought like seven or eight tractors with seized engines usually what works best is soaking them for a while with acetone and atf mixed together 
so the thought behind this is the acetone thins down the ATF. So the ATF has really good lubricating properties and something about the ATF is better than just using engine oil. And then since the acetone thins it down, it makes it creep into the rings and around the pistons much better than if you were to put straight ATF in. You don't have to buy the expensive stuff. I bought this for my truck and never used it. Just get the cheapest stuff they have. Now we're just gonna take the hood off and that'll make it a lot easier to get to the spark plugs. To... All right, that makes it much easier to work on this. And check out that radiator. Someone was determined to get it to stop leaking. Let's clean off the top screws. Uh, carbony but it's not rusty so that's good looks like someone put anti-seize on these which is good you don't have to put anti-seize on spark plugs but thank you to the last guy hmm none of the cylinders look rusty Okay, now I want to get this starter off. I'm not sure how it's supposed to come off. I think you take out those two bolts. Never seen a starter come off like that. <laughs> yeah, that's, this is why. The whole thing is just coming apart. Now let's go. So we're full of mouse nest in there. And there's a hole. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and there's a uh, little access hole there. That is not supposed to be there. Yeah, it's not good. So, in my experience, the best way to free up an engine is to take off the starter and pry against the flywheel teeth. Oh, I moved. bolt there is just spinning inside there. 
but it looks like this is slotted so we can should be able to slide the radiator out all right as you can see we've moved the tractor over here i decided i want to try and get it running before replacing the clutch now it's like a 90 percent chance we're gonna have to take the carburetor off so let's get this air filter out of the way This one actually looks pretty clean. Dump out this air filter, yeah. Look at all that goop in there. Better in here than in the engine though. So this, this gear and this part are supposed to spin free on this shaft, but now since we took this pin out, which is supposed to hold this spring assembly to the shaft so that this won't spin, this is spinning and this is rusted to the shaft. So here's the starter after it's been cleaned up, painted. Let's start putting this back together. All right, that's the trip mechanism. It's uh, pretty simple. So now we have to put this part on. All right. That's the starter put together. Just be careful because this doesn't actually stay together unless it's bolted up to the engine. All right, you can see those two holes there. Also wire brushed this off. The starter's on. Let's see if it spins. Why is it not spinning? All right, so it turns out I had the two housings a little bit misaligned. And what you should always do before taking starters apart is put a punch mark on each side so you remember how they should be rotated. There it goes. All right, here's the carburetor to the Ford. My dad already took the two halves apart because he was cleaning up the outside. So now let's take it apart the rest of the way, clean it out, and here's the carb kit I got for it. This is the complete kit, so it includes all the needles and the choke and throttle shaft. But this carb looks really good, so we'll probably just only end up using the new gasket.
I'm just gonna throw these in the ultrasonic cleaner for 10-15 minutes. So the earlier Ford 8 ends had the distributor up on the front there, tucked in between the radiator and the engine. The later models had it coming out of the side of the engine. So it's important when you're getting parts, you differentiate between those two. Of course, mine has it in the front here, and it makes it a lot easier when you don't have the entire radiator here. rotor comes right off and it's got this little cardboard piece there and looks like the points are held on with a cotter pin it has anti-seize on like every single screw what? But the points look like they're the same so we can put those on All right, now to set the points, you can adjust with this middle screw and then you'd have to lock it down with the up top and bottom screw. So I usually set them, you wanna make sure you're on a lobe here. And I set them about the width of a, of a card. Now we can put the cover back on before I Screw them in. I'm going to make sure I have spark on all of the cylinders. I have this short section of copper line. It's just a flare fitting on that end. And then rubber hose going to this little fuel tank. Alright, we have spark, fuel, and hopefully we have compression and timing. We'll see about those two when we try and start it now. All right, so it's the next day here, and I started off just doing wiring. I put the solenoid back on. I got the positive cable going to the battery, and then to trigger the solenoid, there's actually no positive wire. I mean, the battery comes in there, and then it goes out to the starter, but then to activate the solenoid, it's always ha it always has power. It just grounds through this switch, which is also a neutral safety switch. Then positive from that side of the solenoid comes up to the amp meter. I'm just reusing the old one, it seems to work. Then it goes through the amp meter to the key switch, and the key switch to the ballast resistor, and from there it goes to the coil. All right, now let's try and start it again. <laughs> just do a compression test before we start before we ruin the starter from cranking it over so much here's my compression tester got it on Amazon so you want to make sure the choke is open throttle is wide open <laughs> So 
We got 50 PSI. All right, over 75. This this one's good. So. Yeah, this cylinder's dead. About 10 PSI. So I looked in there, and I could see both the valves opening and closing. So let's do this again. I put more fuel in it. Starting to come back. Got some acetone ATF mix here. Over 50. I think that should be enough for this old engine. There we go, 75. wondering if maybe the intake I mean if the exhaust is stopped up with so much stuff because there's like it's blowing mouse poo and whatever out of the exhaust pipe there all right got the exhaust unbolted it's just this one clamp Look at all that. shut it off and then I actually shut it off with a key it didn't die so I'd call that running this is definitely just steam coming out of there so in the next video we're going to have to split the tractor that's why we have it outside here ready to split with the engine hoist on the uh, shop floor there a couple pieces of plywood and in the garage here, next to the John Deere B, here's the hood that he painted. And here's the other parts and the sides of the hood. Of course, we're also going to need a radiator for it because the one we've got uh, is a Bluetooth. So stay tuned for upcoming videos on the other tractors and splitting this one.